three, two, one. Welcome back to the first AT Talks in this whole week. Um, I think Eli is joining us, so we'll get in here eventually. But I'm here with Ed. Ed, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a loaded question. Um, just, I don't want to say bored, but isolated. Yeah, the uh, the last time we talked about the current world event, I, yeah. I joked in every video that the world was on fire and athletics were on fire. And uh, yeah. here we are one week later and the world is still on fire. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's getting any better. <laughs> we just heard the rest of our school year is done. Mm -hmm. um, everything's going to be online. No graduation ceremonies. So no seniors are walking. Um, so it's just a very tough time for them. Um, I'm still supposed to be reporting for work, but with my son not being in daycare, my wife's a veterinarian, so she's still, she's considered essential staff. Mm -hmm. So uh, starting tomorrow, I believe Vermont has a uh, stay home, um, stay at home order, except for essential staff. <coughs> Excuse me. So she'll still be going into work. I don't know if she's going to have any changes, but yeah, I had the uh, mindset that I'd watch my son all day. She'd get home. I'd sit at the computer, get the paperwork that I want to get done done. And it's just not happening as much as I'd like. Um, let, let me tell you what I did today from eight to noon. I had, today, yeah, nice. I had today off so I didn't have to work. And I sat on my phone all six inches of phone for four hours from eight to noon watching the stock market go up and down i was just i was just talking with my lacrosse coach i'm like what do you think would be a great stock to invest in right now i don't do stocks i don't pay attention to them i'm learning i'm so isn't by fire with my cash <laughs> so he just goes dave and busters he goes your year high has been 59 dollars a share just drop down to 10 and it's like, no, as soon as COVID-19, that whole stay at home order lifts, people are going to flock to those type of places and just go nuts. Well, as you, can, you, can you, can really, you can buy almost anything right now because it's all cheap across the board. Yeah. Everything's down a good 30 to 50%. Yeah. Um, the only things that aren't down are like Amazon and Walmart and uh, maybe Microsoft and a couple insurance things, but almost yeah. everybody's down. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if I was to ever invest, it wouldn't be a lot. I'd just be like, hey, let's see what this does. <laughs> and like put in like $100, you know? So I wouldn't buy much, but well, still. I'm, def I'm learning about it because I've been monkeying around um, yeah. the last couple of weeks with dollars. Yeah. And it's really nerve wracking. It's really scary. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Eli? Eli? It's connected. Oh, I'll be testing, testing. Testing, testing. Hey, we got you. Nice. All, all that we what? talked about so far is what we did today. Oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> was that pretty much nothing or rehabs? No, no. So uh, Mine was not killing my 10-month-old son. Yeah. Ed's <laughs> at home, and I was at home watching the stock market today. Dude, I love it. I watch that literally all day, every day. Yeah. So. I no, I, we were just saying, my lacrosse coach and I were just – we were joking around, like, what should we invest in? And he goes, Dave and Busters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything's on sale right now. If you yeah. guys are into that. That's what yeah, I was I telling Ed. Well, knowing my luck, I'll invest in something. Like I'll, like, I'll go all in. And then they'll be like, yeah, we're going bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be my luck. Yeah. And I'll go to zero. You're yeah. like, well, guys, I just lost 10 grand. I'm going to drive into a lake now. Yeah. Well, that's like, like I said, if I was to ever invest, I'd start with just a hundred dollars because I'm not anything crazy, but yep, yep. lose it, if that's, I lose that's... it, oh well, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's kind of where I started. I, I started in the stock market about, uh, about five years ago and I started out with like 500 bucks to a thousand bucks and then I've just kind of yeah added more money since but like like it's obviously like it's of course like anything that goes to zero like it's it's fine i i make sure i have my emergency savings on the exactly. side and then 
like yeah. all my play money is in there for times like this, which is perfect. So like, mm. you know, if I were to like lose my job tomorrow, like it's not the end of the world. I've, I've got some money saved where I can make do for a little while, but yeah. Yeah. That's like where people get screwed and they're like, take their savings and they're like, throw it in the stock market. I'm like, don't do it. It's terrible. Yeah. Business. Now do you use like a service like E-Trade or anything like that or? Yeah, I actually, well, I started with Robinhood um, just cause it was free. Uh, mm -hmm. with no commissions trading that, and then I, I currently use because i'm a rookie oh dude, it's great starting out it's perfect like perfect 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 and then i only recently moved over into uh charles schwab just because now i'm just dealing with a lot more money than i was before and with robin hood you, you only get up to there's some drawbacks like you can only get up to a thousand dollars in trading a day of instant trading mm -hmm. um and so i wanted to kind of link a a, a bank account to it so I could instantly transfer back and forth and um but Robinhood's a great place to to start but a lot of banks now because of Robinhood have started to go commissions free now like a lot of them do offer free stock market trading now because of Robinhood so that's yeah. been pretty much a pretty sweet deal so now is anybody here doing traditional athletic training services no I am not I'm not, not not till next week. Okay. So what have you guys been doing for um, like really started unfolding about what, 10 to 12 days ago. So what have you guys been doing then? Well, for me, I've just been, like I said, my wife's still working eight, nine hours a day. So I have my son. So keeping him alive, <laughs> which I was on paternity leave three months ago and he was a lot different back then. He would sit still. Now he's crawling, everything, so I'm chasing him around the house. Um, but those, those have been my days. And like I said um, earlier, I was really hoping my wife would get home around like five or six. I'd get on the computer, do some update some injury reports, do some emails, and that's just not really happening. Because by the time she gets home, I'm just, I'm gassed. I have to cook dinner because she takes care of Desmond. That's my son's name. Um, when she gets home it's like well someone has to cook dinner so i'll cook dinner clean and then it's bedtime by like 10 o'clock <laughs> over the next day so I'm just kind of hamster wheeling it right now what about you eli is your um well i've just been so uh we were we were on spring break last week um uh, which we usually don't get it because i was working with the baseball team so i guess like normally it would have been baseball but because it was spring break we all essentially just had a, an actual spring break where we just shut the whole campus down and then as of today we you know we had a staff meeting this morning actually to talk about plans moving forward uh, i've just been kind of self-quarantined just hanging out um you know just kind of working on stuff at, at home uh finance uh real estate research video games talking to people um just really doing a lot of that really not not too much uh going out and then starting next week i'll be allowed to i only have a handful of rehabs but we're going to be basically doing one-on-one -on -one rehab so we're only going to be working like a few hours a day really like it's like come in rehab you know a couple of athletes and even all the post-op patients that we have are getting like referred out to outpatient care like they don't want us um having like that many people in the training room. So we're going to be like super limited for an undisclosed amount of time. Um, so yeah, going to be just spending a lot of time just sort of uh, kind of game plan in the summer. What about you? Let's see. So, well, um, my daytime J uh, daytime job, which I work for the hospital, but it's two separate kind of jobs. The first one is I'm in the concussion clinic where we only see concussion patients. And then the okay. second one is the high school. The high school's closed, it's shut for the foreseeable future. So that's out. And I was just removed from the concussion clinic. We have two doctors. One, one of them is here Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the full-time people will be with him. And I'm usually with the supplemental doctor on Tuesday, but she is immunocompromised. So she is no longer seeing patients. Uh, yeah. So I have no need to be here. So what work has done, there's three hospitals, um, three big hospitals, and then there's a lot of little outpatient things. They yeah. have put the 30 or so athletic trainers for the company 
at the entrances of the hospitals to do medical screenings. So a couple of times a week, we are the frontline medical screener for uh, employees, for any kind of patient appointments, and then very, very, very few visitors that we let in. So that's, that's what I'm doing here and there, but it's only three to four to maybe five times a week. Man. I mean, it's good. Yeah, at least you guys are, I mean, obviously it's good. You guys are both getting paid still, right? Like checks are still coming and you're obviously still. Yeah. Doing stuff at D2 as yeah. Well. Cause I, I'm going to be using some PTO, um, but our HR just, or our union rep just told us to start um, being specific with our, our uh, input with like, instead of just saying sick time, putting COVID-19 sick time, because I think it's one of those you're just preparing in case like, after everything's said and done, the reason I'm taking it is because there's no daycare because all daycares in the state of Vermont had to close down. So that's kind of out of our control. Yeah. So it might be one of those, like it, whatever we declare as because of COVID-19, we might get that back. I, that's my assumption. It wasn't really explained. So yeah, I'm paid luckily. Um, like I said, we're still, my coworkers are still going in cleaning inventory. I was able to go in for about five hours last week and, one of our storage closets was a disaster. So I cleaned it all out, took inventory, put that in. So we are catching up on all that stuff, getting, getting, getting ahead of it before we have to put in our bids for the summer. Uh, <coughs> um, working on revamping our PPEs uh, for the athletes. Um, I'm, I'm going to be working on our EAP eventually as well. So there's plenty of stuff to do. It's just finding the time to do it. Me personally. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing I want to be inventory there. I'm going to, there's no really inventory system here where I'm at. And <laughs> that's what nice. I did all Monday and Tuesday. Nice. They are I guys and they are Those ready to go. Matter. They're beautiful. That's yeah. awesome. You remember seeing you, uh, uh, on Twitter with all that, like putting that together and stuff and getting people to share. Yeah. Dude, I, I was calling right. people. I was That's challenging awesome. people in a friendly competition way. I wanted to win, of course, because I'm competitive. But what happened is <laughs> I was like, you send me your EAP, you send me your PNP, and I'll decide if I win or not. And, and instead of people sending me this stuff, they just started asking me for mine. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, did you uh, piss anyone um, off? Oh, not, I probably, I, I probably make people mad every dude. When you tweet like 15 times a day and it's like, whatever you're thinking, and I'm a sarcastic, snarky kind of person, you, you just immediately turn people the wrong way. And I don't even do it. I thought, that's a, I thought being sarcastic and snarky was a job qualification for athletic trainers. No, it's not. <laughs> not on Twitter. Not on Twitter. <laughs> no. I'm learning that little by little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, it's funny like i'm not even on social media as much i mean i think i tweeted it the other day it's like my son's sleeping on my chest for two hours i have time mm -hmm. um but like whenever i'm on twitter it's like all these people are doing all this stuff like reaching out to their athletes doing zoom rehabs with their athletes i'm like how come everyone seems to have their stuff together and i'm just like sitting here doing absolutely nothing like i feel like a terrible athletic trainer and then, like, all these other athletic trainers like you, Tom, working in the hospital setting, working at the hospitals, it's like, I'd love to volunteer and help on the front lines because you hear how, like, some places, how dire they are. I just think it's going to grow. But, like, with my son being premature, he's immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. uh, we were told, like, be careful until he's about two when that should kind of go away. So it's like I, my wife and I are petrified to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. the way in hell I'm going to be near a hospital unless I absolutely have to be there for, for an injury and that's for myself so I just kind of feel like worthless right now no I mean don't be I honestly like um if, like for me like I've literally been cooped up indoors like mm -hmm. athletic training wise like I've meant like during spring break a lot of my athletes were gone anyway but mm -hmm. I hardly did anything like anything athletic training related at all. And like, I'm only like this weekend to maybe start doing some stuff 
touch base with a couple of guys and rehabs and things like that. But you do you, man. Like, don't, don't worry about, like, what other people are doing. Like, oh, honestly, I know. that's just a recipe for disaster. Like, Oh, I know. But, like, I, I'm in that situation where, like, I do have a couple athletes I should reach out to, and I just, like, I can't get to it. <laughs> like, by the time I go to sit down, it's like, no, I just – it's not in my day, even though I'm sitting around just really not doing it anything it's like like well, the last thing i do is i could pull up my my email on my phone and do it and i just don't well you're definitely not alone there's there's a lot of athletic trainers all over twitter because i see it every day that are having identity crises right now because they have no idea who they are outside of athletics and they don't know what to do with their lives and they're bored yeah. and they're quarantined and they don't feel like they make an impact and they don't feel like they have value yeah and i think it's like, crazy yeah, well, like, if my wife if my wife was also home, it would be easier because, like, I could do yard work. So, like, the thing was, like, all last week it was nice sunny days, but a little on the chillier side, so I don't want to bring my son out. So, it's like, my, so, like, I'm just sitting there, and it's like, I just wasted a day where I could have, like, gotten a bunch of yard work done, <laughs> and it's just like nothing's getting accomplished. What in the world? <clears throat> Can we talk about this unrealistic expectation of value and impact athletic trainers put on themselves? Where we're never good enough. Yeah, let's talk more. I'm the only person that sees that. No, I, that's exactly how I feel right now. Like I always feel like I, it'd be better. Nope. I, I mean, maybe when I was younger, but definitely not now. Like definitely not now i mean then it just like for me the differences was is just you know like realizing like, even now when we have all this like downtime like we've just there's just there's been so much work done on the front end that we forget about i think like we kind of put things in like, we kind of put things in the back of our minds like it's what we're you know what we're supposed to do like there just there's a lot of things that um it's gonna sound like a bad way of putting it like i mean we deserve the downtime. We deserve it. And we shouldn't feel guilty for it. You know what I mean? But so many people feel guilty for it. And I'm like, we shouldn't like at all. I don't, yeah. I used to, I used to feel a hundred percent. I used to be that guy. Like I used to be that guy where my, my, I would fake going home and then go back in the training room, like, and then get some work done, stay there till like 11 PM instead of leaving at like seven or 8 PM when I was supposed to like, yeah. I would just, I was just like, I pretend to leave and then go back. Like that was like my first, my first year. Um, and I don't know why, but like, it was just something to prove, I guess myself or prove to other people that we can, I can do it. But it, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to prove. It's just a matter of like, you know, knowing what's, you're not going to finish everything in one day and knowing how to kind of balance, be efficient and still have maintain good relationships between the staff and the players and the athletes and, I was I was getting better at that, especially this year. But then I was on paternity leave for two months, and I didn't feel bad at all. Like, I didn't feel undervalued. Everyone was on board. Everyone understood. Everyone was accepting, which was very fortunate. Um, but then we come back, shortened year. So now like, I'm still supposed to be going into work and – with my situation, I can't. So not only do I feel bad, I, I don't feel bad for missing that time, November, December, but now it's like, now I'm gone. Half of March could be all of April, could be all of May, when a lot of, when my coworkers are still going in, not as much as they usually do, but I like being there when they're there for that team aspect. Cause I don't want to feel like I'm not a part of the team and I'm not kind of carrying my weight um, just because I've been there the longest out of everyone. Um, so like a lot of times when people have questions that my boss can't answer, if he's not there, they kind of go to me and it's like, well, I don't know what Steve would, my boss would say, but this is what we've done in the past. So let's try this. If he doesn't like it, he'll just let us know. Um, we're like, I'm afraid of getting to it, coming back be like what the hell happened <laughs> while i was gone like this could have all been avoided if i had just been able to come in so i'm definitely having fomo right now 
See, but the thing with that is like, yeah, it would have been like avoided in those situations, but then there's no learning or growing opportunities for like other people. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I know sometimes, and that kind of like dives into the whole, like sometimes it's, we got to do things ourselves mm -hmm. in order to get it done the way that we want and get it done right. But like, yeah. I just, I, I, I like to talk with my hands. Yeah. You haven't learned this by now? We've done that. Yeah. Together. Yeah. No, but um but you know it's it's down to like you know just um but you know being okay knowing that it might not get done exactly the way that it's supposed to and the yeah. way that you want it or somebody else wants it or whatever the case may be but it's okay if it's done not up to those like standards but then giving the people involved some of like the experience the law the the knowledge and like that fear of or not the fear, the experience of failure. Um, oh yeah. If you will, you know what I mean? And so like, even though like some of those situations may not have panned out that well, there's a silver, yeah. silver lining to it that I think it's important to kind of just keep in, in perspective, you know? Yeah. I don't feel like I'm missing out at all. I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys my perspective. All right, this is the same Let's thing hear. for me as it would have been in June or it would have been for half of July. Because I'm at a high school and we're not doing anything in those months, we're not doing anything now. So I am refilling my batteries. And if we come back this spring, I'm gonna crush it. And if we don't come back this spring and we come back this summer, I'm gonna crush it. We're gonna crush it either, either way. So I, I don't see why so many people online are so upset. Uh, like, like, I love my kids. I care for my kids. I would do anything for them, but I'm not sitting at home all, you know, like mopey and sad and pouting. Like I can't go into the athletic training room today. And I feel terrible. Like, I don't know. See, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, you can go Eli. And, and I'm, I'm, not not saying, say, I'm literally in the same exact boat. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying you're mopey or anything. Ed. I just, I'm seeing a lot of that on the on Twitter. Yeah, no, for, for me, where, where I'm mopey is the fact that, like, for about 10 straight days, I haven't seen anyone outside my son and my wife. I'm a social butterfly, so I need to see people. Like, I go for drives just to get out of the house because I feel cooped up because, like, in the summers when I'm not working, it's like I have projects that I do. Like, I keep myself busy. I'm not, like... I don't feel like I'm keeping myself stimulated enough, just making sure my son doesn't crawl down the basement stairs, um, which is obviously very important. Don't let your child do that. But it's like, there's, I need to do something else. Like I'm busy, but not a busy that I like. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and I think it's good. You know, I think it, it, it's good in a sense that like, you know, it, it, it does force us to, kind of adapt a little bit you know what I mean because it's you know, I know like during the summertime like when you do get downtime you're like oh here are my normal things that I can do but mm -hmm. now with this unique situation it kind of you know forces you to sort of be really creative in in kind of managing your time and and, and kind of how you go about you know handling it and you're like okay well what is it can't like so these are these are the things I look I am a social butterfly I need this x y and z <laughs> however yeah you've got now these boundaries set and you're like, okay, well now how do I, how do I satisfy yeah. those needs working around the restrictions given, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, whether that's, you know, whether it's just this books, knitting, I don't, you know what I mean? Like um, it just kind of, I think it, it'll kind of just force you to, to, to kind of be creative, you know? And I think, you know, just, you know, kind of spending yeah. time just even thinking about it, not necessarily worrying about it, but thinking of, yeah. Um, you know, ideas and things to kind of cope with it. Um, or you things to rehab you know, substitute. Right you just summarize rehab. It's like, how can we do the things we need to do, giving the restrictions that we have to get this athlete better? Yeah. 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 Concept, but just now we're applying that to life. Yeah. 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 So well, I even think to myself, if it was just 10 to 15 degrees warmer, I could bring my son outside and we could be outside, <laughs> you know, like, so it's just like kind of restricted by that too. But I'm ready for warm weather. I'm really tired of the cold. We got six inches of snow last night. 
Uh, it snowed a couple of days ago. Uh, I think Sunday. We're we uh, like an inch, uh, inch or two. Anyway. Yeah, what are you in Utah, Colorado? Bro. Down there or something? Whatever. Southern Utah? Southern Utah, there you go. It's like, so we're like in the 70s and wow. sunny. I, I didn't want to rub it in, but. <laughs> Must be nice. Uh, oh, man. It's 8 o'clock here. It's dark. <laughs> it's 7.20 here. It's dark. <laughs> Yeah, see, we're still at, we're at six twenty. We still have like another forty minutes of about an hour of sunlight. Yeah, yeah, but not, I've been running into a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of friends of my athletic trainer are going like stir crazy. But they're like, "How you been doing?" And I was like, "Thomas, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm like, I've been good. Like, I mean, great, yeah, handling it fine. Like, I, I, I'm honestly, I've somehow managed to keep myself." busy even though i've been home for over a week now i'm like it really hasn't felt that way i've just every day it's just always mm -hmm. kind of working on something um yeah. and then the day kind of goes by pretty quick and yeah i'm just trying to pick up different interests and you know craft other skills like just cooking my own meals and just having fun cooking or learning about the stock market or doing uh, a really crappy at home workout program with uh, one resistance band because you can't go to the gym. Like that's that's fine. I'll find other things to do and other things to learn, and I'll take this time to just relax and veg out. Yeah. See where where my mindset has to change is like when it gets to be like six p.m. It's like oh my day winds down, but for me that's when my day should be winding up. So like when my wife does get home, it's one of those like. I should do A, B, C, D, and E. And by the time she gets home, it's like, I don't know where to start. And then I just shut down. And like, I don't get anything done. Cause I'm just like, I'm so overwhelmed with what I wanted to get done today that I can't just pick one thing that I should value over the others. So then I just sit around like today she got home. I was like, I'm anxious because I had a list in my head of everything I wanted to do. Yeah. And I've done nothing. <laughs> And then further getting to that, that will just continue going and going and going. And so I'm always like, one tomorrow, tomorrow I'll figure it out. But that, no. Just nope. pick one it thing. Work. It doesn't work. The three second rule, you got the three second rule inside your head. You got to like, you know, just say yes and go for it within like three seconds. Otherwise, you're more <laughs> likely just to keep putting it off and not do it. Exactly. So you're like, oh, I need, to, I need to knock this task off. Just before yeah. you can even come up with all these excuses, just start. And even if you don't finish it, wow. yeah. just yeah, pick one thing, whatever that is. If it's something, that, yeah, anything. That was that was my Sunday. My Sunday was just very like, A, get it done. B, get it done. I got I got a ton done too. I was pumped. But like that was the only day where I felt like felt like that. So the good news is, is you're in control of it. That's true. All right. I'm going to keep talking about other things I'm noticing on Twitter. And that is, is that you guys have too much free time and stop tagging me and all this stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> that, that, and then Instagram with the freaking push up challenge. If I see another person doing a push up, I'm going to jump off a cliff. What, what's the push up challenge? Uh, I got tagged in that yesterday. One of my one of my athletes tagged me in it, and I, I responded. I was like, "Hell no!" I put it on my story. I put, <laughs> yes. I put the story he did. I was like, "Hell no!" Because it was a twenty five <laughs> challenge, twenty five push up challenge. I'm like, "I'm lucky if I can do 10. Is anybody counting? I'm not doing this. I got you. I got you. Nice, good form. <laughs> Luckily, the one I got tagged in is only ten push ups. Yeah, no, there's a 25, there's a 30. No, there was like... There you go, Tom. I think that was 25. So I nominate yeah, that was... Big Ed and the no. Eli to do the challenge. I did. Five. <laughs> 16 I just ounce, did it yesterday, but... 16-ounce bicep curl. That's all I'm doing. Where am I going to do all these push-ups? I don't even know how to... Hey, man, I trained I'll... today with one resistance band attached to my, you know, bridge. <laughs> But, uh, oh man. no i've been tagged in the push-up challenge show a picture of your dog challenge <laughs> the at game face um which i actually like that one and that was that was that was eli's yeah i like that one that was the best one um <laughs> what else 
There's another random one. I'm just like, oh my god, I, there's just too <sighs> nice. People are too bored. Yeah, seriously, way too much time on our hands, all of us. So. <laughs> hey Ed, you better smack out those push-ups. Let's go. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> All right, you know what? Instead of push-ups, you can do burpees instead. <laughs> yeah, okay. You Turkish want... get-ups with your son. Dude, I, I told my parents the other day, <laughs> after three days of being home with him because he is so busy, like you hold him and he wants to like jump out of your arms, my elbow hurt like it used to after I used to pitch when I was younger. <laughs> yeah, jeez. You just left some mice on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ice is for drinks. We've discussed that. 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, ice, and a strip of KT tape will fix that. <laughs> um, what about, would STEM help too? Um, <laughs> yes. STEM with an E will 100% work. But It'll no cure it. But, but rehab has been shown not to fix any problems. Okay. Um, I want to let you know that all my ATC friends, <sighs> dude, I hate when people put that in a tweet. It's AT. It's not ATCs. It's ATs. I've gotten so much better at that. See, I'm ranting again. See, I'm an ATC, but you're Wojnikiewicz, comma ATC. Yeah. What order does it go? Is it LAT first, licensure first? Licensure for okay. Without licensure, you can't practice unless you're working in Cali, right? So. <laughs> Or Utah, the state's crazy. I know everyone, everyone wants that bill to pass to get, but I was, for the record, when I was, at least for California, when I was out there, it was kind of nice because we essentially could do whatever we wanted. Like, like so I got, I'm certified in dry needling and I could dry needle in California because there's yeah. no licensure. So I could, but PTs couldn't. And so now that I'm in Utah, I can't dry needle because we have state licensure. That doesn't let me do that, but. Uh, yeah. I'm 100% sure you can do that in Indiana. Like, I think in Vermont you can. I don't know. I don't know. The practice. Nice. practice act. It's about two sentences, and it's like, as an athletic trainer, you can perform anything that's manual, like equipment, heat, electricity. Like, it's just the most. Oh my goodness! Big. <laughs> like, I can do that. That falls in mechanical. I'm good. Well, that's just that's like awesome. that's just like. Oh, you can work under the direction of a doctor. It's like my team doctor gives us so many standing orders. It's amazing. Like, oh, how can you do that? My doctor gave me a standing order. I can do it. <laughs> you can work under a chiropractor here. You are? No, you can. Oh, yeah. Same here. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. It is because, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Is, yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking to start a Twitter war. Too late, already started. You know what? Nobody watches these anyway. So, um, yeah, just, I'm not a fan. Someday the, the people will. <laughs> We're here for them. I'm actually just going to start going on Twitter. I'm just going to be like, at Tom Burkowski said, contractors suck. <laughs> at, uh, of- <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Tom, yesterday when you were like, I saw a Twitter notification, like, that someone like at you and then you got all nervous like, uh, okay. immediately <laughs> as soon as I saw like, the screenshot and i'm the first tweet in the screenshot i'm like oh man someone thinks i said something the wrong way and they're about to blast me uh, <laughs> like that just a couple days ago my my friend hannah and i are joking we're both very sarcastic having lots of fun and um she's like i need to stop eating i'm gonna get the covid 25 pounds <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, nice. here's a picture of me rolling in the work, and it was Violet at, um, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where she she nice. eats, eats the gum and she gets all fat. She turned Violet's yeah. turning Violet. So, yeah. so my friend um, retweets that that gif, and she goes, "Chance of getting COVID high. Chance of getting diabetes higher." And she was referencing those old diabetes commercials. And I thought that was hilarious, but of course we made someone very angry. So we, so I, we had to apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry you were offended, but it was a joke and we don't take, you know, diabetes lightly. We're just trying to have fun in quarantine. 
Gotta make fun of someone. That's probably why I don't. I I I. I probably don't tweet as much as, and I'm not, I'm not usually, I don't tweet a whole lot in general anyway, but I don't do it as much, even though I've got all this free time now. Yeah. Most of my tweets are replies. Every tweet makes someone mad. That's, there's just too many people out there. Yeah. 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 No, no one's moderate. It's everything's polarizing. So like uh, when I work wrestling, I put pre-rep on my forearm and I roll it up. I saw that. Yeah, that's a sweet trick. I the nose plugs in there and um, the gauze. I took a picture of that, and someone was triggered because the glove, instead of being pulled all the way down, it was like kind of like rolled up, like right here. And they're like, you need to untuck that glove. And I was like, calm down. Wow. There was uh, one time we had a home football game, and a parent – I think it was an alumni's parent, so the kid wasn't even playing. Was, came to the game, came up to me and reprimanded me for my students not using hand sanitizer. And I was just like, <laughs> what? So I went to my students. I was like, do you guys use hand sanitizer? Like, whenever we touch someone, we use hand sanitizer. But they had the small little thing, so they just like, boom, so no one could see. And I'm getting reprimanded from an alumni's parent about them not using hand sanitizer. So... I found, I saw exactly where he sat. This is Petty Ed. I brought the huge jug of hand sanitizer out and I made sure all my students would just look at him and hand sanitize like every five minutes during a football game. But he was triggered because he thought we weren't using hand sanitizer. That's the same level of petty that I am. I'm that yeah. petty. Yeah, I really wanted to put a sign and I'd go there and give him the middle finger, but... uh. No, like, Eli's too nice. I thought it was funny. <laughs> so, uh, I try to be, man. I try to be. Let's talk about how <laughs> nice Eli is. He's too nice. Stop being way too nice. Yeah. Way too nice. Just trying to, I'm just trying to, you know, I don't know, just trying to be a good person, man. That's it. Like, he's trying, know, he's like, trying to be, he's being the ray of sunshine in my cloudy life right now. <laughs> no, hey, hey, let, let's ask you uh, a very serious question. Hey, when you were working for the NFL, um, yep. for everybody that had pain, is it true that they just like go in the back room and juice them up with like anti-inflammatories? Um, we well, you don't have to okay. you don't have to answer that. I was watching a documentary and they're like everybody. I forgot the name of the uh, anti-inflammatory. It's a painkiller. So we have a handful of them. So I mean, so short answer, yes. Um, it right. depends on the like the type of anti-inflammatory. Kind of depends on the injury. And like how like how immediate we need it to like act, how severe it is. So um, the like lightest anti-inflammatory would rarely would get like diclofenac is like super like low what grade. You got? Mostly okay. So um, endomethacin was our most popular one, yeah. um, and then uh, the toradol. Toradol. Yep. Pills, toradol, yep. toradol. That was a big thing. Um, However, with Toradol, they were never prescribed. Um, we would prescribe more like endomethacin, but with Toradol, we had pill form and the injection form. Um, both options were available to athletes, but we had them always at the beginning of the season or any if they, if they got signed on in the middle of the season. Uh, there was a waiver to sign um, if they would potentially would want to receive that type of anti-inflammatory. Uh, we kind of go through and explain. We had this whole packet kind of explain everything about um, uh, about the medication and risks associated with it. And then if they needed it, so like on game day, guys would come and, and they would ask for Toradol. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, well, why? You know, and they're like, whatever the reason is. And as long as they weren't taking any other medica it's medications, we would give it football. to them. Like um, yeah, it. like we need, we need guys to, to play. I mean, they're getting – some of them get, you know, get paid a million dollars a game you know, if they want an anti-inflammatory to help a little bit with the pain or whatever it may be. Um, but we were never like, Hey guys, come over here, line up, like start cramming all these pills down your throat. If there was an injury, thousand percent, they're getting anti-inflammatories instantly. Like we we're not going to wait because time is of, is of the essence. So we had prescription meds in the training room. We would hand out like, you know, of course, under doctor's orders, we would just call up our team doc and say, Hey, blah, blah, blah. So that's like, this is going on. Can I give them some, uh, some endo? And it like 
sure, or give them something else instead. Um, but the tour at all was very much by request, and then we wouldn't push it, like cram it down guys' throats. And then they had the option to take either pill form or the injectable version, uh, I am, or, um, you know, and they also signed, you know, again, a waiver going over the, all the benefits, like the, not the benefits, all the side effects of the medication. Mm -hmm. um, so medication, it's, it is big, but um, not in a way, I, I don't, I haven't seen, I don't really watch many like football documentaries or anything, but like, um, it's not like guys like line up with their butt cheeks hanging out and then we're just, yeah. you know, injecting That's them. They make it sound like in the, uh, some of the documentaries. Yeah. No, I, it, it did used to be that way. Like I know it used to be like that. Like before I got there, like talking to some of the old timers that were in the league, um, it definitely <coughs> used to be like that, but not when, not when I was there. Um, and so that's, and, that, and it's changed. And obviously like, I mean, now it's just been getting more and more strict, but yeah, it's, it's definitely not the case, at least with the, the teams that I've been with and some of the people that, that I know out of the 32 teams, is there going to be one that maybe still does it? Maybe. Uh, but generally a lot of them are kind of moving away from it just because they are running into a lot of those like legal issues. Mm -hmm. I have one random question. What's the craziest injury where you're like, this guy's actually playing with this injury. Like you never thought that someone could ever play with that type of injury. Um, it would be the offensive there was an offensive lineman who had completely destroyed his knee. Um, he had an unhappy triad. He had a torn VMO. Um, he had a torn, uh, yeah, ACL, PCL, MCL, meniscus. Uh, VMO was gone. Uh, the whole knee got, like, destroyed. The, the, v, the VMO was just, like, shredded. Um, and he was a, a veteran, so he was a little bit older, and he was 30s. Uh, he's probably, like, 34. Four at the time uh, of the injury. Anyway, uh, we got less than a minute, but he ended up rehabbing. I'm like, dude, this guy, like, I don't know how he's going to come back. But he came yeah. back and played uh, two or three more years in, in, in the league, and then before he, wow. he retired, which I didn't think was not going to happen because that knee was just gone. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, we have one minute, and I'm going to close on a positive note, and I'm going to read you two of my awesome tweets that totally deserve more likes and retweets. For sure. All right. Um, that's like trainers. Now is not the time to be afraid of change, adversity, growth, or the unknown. The healthcare industry needs us. They need the best us. Grow, <coughs> flourish, begin a new chapter. We might be far from home, far from athletics, but we are still healthcare. Show your value and show your impact. Number one. That's number. That's all right. Now number two. We got what? Less than a minute. Even in these unique and challenging times, we athletic trainers continue to show the world our impact, value, flexibility, growth, hospitality, empathy, ability to connect to others, knowledge, skills, and problem solving, healthcare through action. So even if you're sitting at home and you don't feel valuable and you don't feel like you make an impact, you do and you are. So keep doing it. Keep on going on. Thousand percent. Totally agree with you. Coming man. on. Don't go away after that because we're going to talk more. Unless you don't want to, that's fine too, whatever. No, I want to talk. Yeah. <laughs>